Speaker, uh, uh, can I just say that uh, the visions on the uh, television sets the other day were redolent very much of 1975, no matter what uh, Secretary of State Blinken said. The parallels with the departure from Saigon of the Americans was shocking, but also very true. The reality for us is that the point I want to make is that the way we withdraw matters almost as much as the decision to withdraw from Afghanistan. I want to come back to that in a second. The chaotic, ghastly departure, the way that people were falling off the aircraft in their determination to get away and the helicopter shipping people out, says terrible things about the values that we hold and those who we wish to protect. So this is a shame on all of us, not just America, but also the whole of NATO uh, and here uh, for us in this House. Uh, the fact is that we know that U.S. support for the, uh, uh, for the um, uh, military in, in Afghanistan had evaporated and uh, there was pressures to leave. Uh, but the U.S. The, was a better way because the U.S. Uh, nonpartisan uh, Afghan study group came forward and said that actually over the last 18 months the U.S. had suffered no casualties at all. They had withdrawn directly from the front line and the U.K. the same. But we were giving support, help and aid to those who were in the front line, the 70,000 that died who were members of the Afghan forces, whom we should be incredibly proud of uh, today. On that point, Indeed. very briefly, the Prime Minister reminded the House the Afghans lost 70,000 men who we helped to train and fought alongside. Even though they were not paid, some of them for many months, because of endemic <coughs> corruption in Kabul, does my right honourable friend agree, therefore, to imply, as some have, that they basically ran away when for 10 years and more they've done precisely the opposite is basically shameful. It is no question, it is an infamous statement to make. Uh, these men and women had lost their lives in trying to uphold what we had brought to Afghanistan, and we should be proud of them. And I do say to the American president, even though the government is perhaps reluctant to say this, and even the opposition leadership, I say to the American President, you have no right to use excuses and base them on people who have lost their lives and done so bravely. The withdrawal of the air support was critical at that moment. The moment that went, the Taliban got a green light and they knew they were going to go in and these Afghan forces could not be supported. That was a critical decision. It was done in a hurry and it was wrong. And the reality is, as I was saying earlier on, the Afghan study group said that there was no need for this precipitative departure in America. They could have kept a number of forces there at a much lower cost, supporting those in the front line, and we could have supported them doing this. And I asked my right honourable friend who gets up later on, did we at any stage demand that the US government review their decision? Did we say to them this was wrong? <coughs> did we say we must find a way to support what we have started in Afghanistan? And I say really the point that I want to make here is because it's not just, and I'm proud about what our troops achieved, and I know they will feel deserted at this point. And I didn't serve there, but I've served in Northern Ireland. I know what the feeling is. But I say those who died today rise in glory because they gave something to the Afghans, which is what we call hope. But we must find a way that it is not dashed. And the truth is, the big sad truth is that, uh, sorry, I give away grateful. Um, on that point of hope, that 45-year-old woman in Kabul on Sunday who spent 20 years being oppressed and having access to education reduced, has spent 20 years with good fortune raising a family with women and girls and is now facing that, all of that being taken away. Do, do, would he agree with me that we need to offer her hope as well? We do. The problem is that we've pulled out and the Americans have pulled out. And that is the problem. We have to find a way now to support them. That's absolutely the case. And those who need to come here must come here. The doors must be open. We must do what we have to do. But the problem I have now is that the West, upholding democracy, the rule of law and human rights, is in retreat. We have now opened the door to the Chinese and the Russians, who, by the way, kept their embassies open throughout the whole of this, fully staffed, with permission from the Taliban. You see the Chinese uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs now meeting the Taliban. They have now recognised the Taliban. So what are we dealing with here? Taiwan. Let me just read what the mouthpiece of the, uh, of the Chinese government said, the Global Times. They said yesterday, 
From what has happened in Afghanistan, those in Taiwan should perceive that once a war breaks out in the Straits, the island's defence will collapse in hours and the US military won't come to help. That would have gone out under President Xi's directive. They know what they're dealing with. Their belief now is we will not stand up for freedom. We will not stand up for democracy. And we have encouraged those, the totalitarian states and those terrible oppressive uh, states that we know of, we have encouraged them to believe that we are in full retreat. After Saigon, America left the global stage for a decade and there was terrible consequences, Iran and everywhere else. We cannot allow that to happen again. I criticize America for this, but I know also they are our greatest and best allies and best hope of freedom. We need to bring them back. That is the job of the British government, is now to bring the Americans back to realize their commitment. Let me just quote what John Kennedy said all those years ago. He said, let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe, to assure the survival and the success of liberty. That is what should enshrine our purpose. The concept of democracy and human rights is a delicate flower. It is not the natural state of being unless you defend it. And we must defend it wherever it is. Yes, there are costs. There is a better way in Afghanistan. But what we have done in this chaotic rush, despicable retreat from Kabul, is to hearten and to embolden those who would bring it down. I remind the House that President Reagan, when pressed about this, and I hope the US listens to this particular one, he said, freedom is never more than a generation away from extinction. It must be fought for. We in this House take these liberties for granted. We must speak out. America must come back. And we must send a signal immediately that we are not going to give way, that the totalitarian states of China and Russia cannot win in the end, that Islamic extremism cannot be found a bolt hole. Yes, we want to say Taliban must step up, but what will we do about it? Now we have to put means behind words. This House must make that happen. Yeah.